one, <clears throat> to be honest with you. It's going to be super interesting because uh, round two is also usually pretty tough to tip. Oh, wait, we're already live. There you go. Hey, guys, how you going? So, um, Better Cow Sport, we're here for our round two tips and predictions. Now, guys, obviously, uh, if you are watching this live, we appreciate you jump into the comment section. Let us know your thoughts about the games that were and the games that will be this weekend, obviously. And if you are tuning into this after we've gone live, there is the timestamps where you can go to the exact game that you need to, uh, that you want to hear the thoughts and opinions on uh, for every single game. So, obviously, I do that within five or so minutes after we do finish up the live stream. But obviously, guys, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new around here. We've got a big week of games, actually. Some really, really big games to actually talk over. Obviously, the Titans do have the bye this week. Trust me, we need it. Um, after the week that just was, uh, we definitely do need that one. So, yeah, we've got the bye this week, and then it's the Bulldogs in two weeks' time. The games this round that we're going to be talking over, the Broncos Rabbitohs on Thursday night is going to be an absolute cracker. I uh, don't know how. It's such wild uh, kind of difference in the odds there, but we'll talk about that. Sharks and Bulldogs, uh, which should be an interesting one, but we'll yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, Panthers and the Eels. Raiders versus the Tigers. We've got Cowboys and the Knights. Storm versus the Warriors. Manly versus the Roosters. And the final game is the Dolphins taking on the Dragons there. So, yeah, a lot of uh, really interesting games, especially those opening couple there, man. And uh, it's going to be a real exciting one to get into. But let's go have a look at the chat. Let's see what you guys are saying. Uh, we've got a... Uh, we had a big weekend, man. I'm still recovering. I'm still uh, still recovering, man. So let's absolutely slap it down. And Dean Love stuff says, hey, hello, mate. Sam Jenkins says, hey, bro, hello, mate. Uh, TJ Tower, get around you. Christian Kessie, you must be looking forward to Belmore. Ah, it is where it is, man. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll be there for sure. You know, we'll be there regardless, dude. You know, I turn up uh, home and away regardless of the results. Uh, you know, what happened on the weekend definitely doesn't make it easier. Uh, but at the end of the day, man, you, you know me. I love my rugby league and we'll absolutely be there for sure. Brandon says, how good was the Cowboys game? We are leading the ladder at the moment. Yeah, uh, like I say to you guys all the time, but firstly, that was a good win against the Dolphins for sure. Dolphins did look awful, and their team list was really confusing. Uh, but I did tip the Cowboys to win that game 13+. plus. I, I was pretty confident in that one, to be completely honest with you. And uh, the Cowboys did win. But I also do tell everybody, don't look at the table until 15 to 18 rounds in. You know, you don't even look, even think really about that table until we're starting to get towards that back end of the year. Simply because it's, it's just... All over the shop right now. You know what I'm saying? Like the Tigers, are, well, they're ninth to be fair, but that is still probably a little bit unrealistic. Uh, you know, you've got some teams up there that just won't be there, right? So, you know, overall, I uh, just kind of look at it, I guess, glance at it, but don't take anything in regards to the ladder seriously at the moment. It's still way too early in the season. Obviously, we've had one individual round. We've seen many years, many, many years where, like, for example, look at last year, the Knights, they sucked until like round 18 and then pumped time strong late. Uh, to get into the finals. So, you know, there's there's everything up for grabs still. Every single team is still in the equation. Uh, Dinky Link says, wouldn't be surprised if the Saints beat the Finns. Uh, well, they're favourites. I don't know where the surprise would be there. Uh, TJ Towers says, the Raiders were great. Uh, yeah, the Raiders were, you know, they are fine. You know, they played the Newcastle Knights. I need to see them a few more weeks, obviously, before we start to really kind of uh, you know, with him home. But at the end of the day, yeah, it was a good win in, in round one. That was unexpected for sure, because I know I tipped the Knights. I think pretty much everybody tipped the Knights. Most people, like this week, got like two or three tips right. Uh, I was pretty happy to get five. Uh, you know, obviously I did tip the Roosters to beat the Broncos. I tipped the Manly to beat the Rabbitohs. We went the uh, we went the Panthers over the Storm, which was wrong. We went the Knights of the Rays, which was wrong. We went the Sharkies in an upset of the Warriors, which was right. Obviously, the, the Titans, and I was pretty confident in that, which obviously didn't work out. But yeah, everyone went the Eels, and I was pretty confident with the Cowboys so, over the Dolphins. So, yeah, look, it was a, a big round week one uh, where most people got pretty much all of their tips wrong, which, uh, which does suck there. Christian Kerr says, Cowboys and Raiders, I'm still keen to read. I'm unsure how they will go this year. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you, and we'll, we'll talk about that today for sure. Uh, and Tommy, remember for 25 months, gee whiz, we had to put up with the old Tommy for uh, 25 months. But when he's saying things like this, we can't complain. He said, Broncos suck. Thank you very much, Tommy. Thank you very much, Tommy. Uh, Johnny, Johnny Emerson says, Luke Brooks, Daly M. It's going to be interesting to see how he pans out in the next couple of weeks for sure. Uh, and Dinky Links has forgot Saints were favourites. been a while since that happened. Uh, yeah, well, we'll explain why. But all right, guys, let's get into the games here. Obviously, keep coming away in the chat. Let us know your thoughts 
uh, all throughout. Um, and basically, if you guys don't know how this works, I'll go through both the teams, the lineups and whatnot, give my thoughts and analysis, give my prediction, go to the chat quickly, and then we'll move on to the next game, obviously. So like I said, smack up that thumbs up button. Jeez, I said up before I was meant to. Smack that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you are new around here. Obviously, we'll be live for every single game this weekend because there's no Titans game, right? So I won't be away. Uh, so I'll be live for every single one of these games here on the channel. Thanks to TVC Live, baby. Let's get it. But all right, the first game here, Broncos taking on the South Sydney Rabbitohs. It's 12th versus 13th, but who cares about that? Uh, Broncos coming to this game at a dull 38 favorites, whilst the Rabbitohs coming in at $3.07, and this is a home game at Suncorp Stadium. Now, obviously, the Broncos lost that first game to the Roosters and did not look great. The Roosters, obviously, are a better team than... Uh, <laughs> You know, people like to give them credit for. Uh, the Roosters do have a team that really on paper should be contending for a premiership, but we've just seen in recent years that despite that, they do still quite, you know, get off to a, a real slow start. But they didn't this time round, and the Broncos, it did seem in that game they are miss missing those guys like the Herbie Farnworth, like the Tommy Flegler, uh, Kurt Catewell, Ken Palacio, who didn't have a great start to his Titans career. But overall, you know, those four guys were big losses there, and you could see that. And then they lost Pierre Kura in the first couple of minutes of that game against the Roosters as well. So uh, interesting to see why it's a dollar thirty-eight odds there for the Broncos, but I think it's because the Rabbitohs, on the other hand, they have quite a few players out still. Their backline still, you know, in that uh, little bit of a situation with no Campbell Graham. There's no uh, who's the other one there, Jackie White, and still until round four. Uh, there is also um, they lost Jai Arrow as well in the in the game as well. So yeah, look, overall it's a, a tough one there for the Rabbitohs who are still trying to kind of work themselves into the season despite all the injuries. And also, they've got a lot to prove this year. Uh, they did obviously get pumped by Manly there, but Manly are a better team this year. I was really hesitant on them, but I was happy to put them in ninth and then kind of go from there, but that middle ground, and Manly did prove a lot in that first game. But it was against Rabbitohs team that did look a little bit average without their players. But let's get into the uh, two team lumps here. So over the Broncos, Jaden Hunt, Jock Madden, Tristan Saylor, and Xavier Willison are in with no outs there. You've got Reese Walsh as the fullback, Jesse Arthurs and Dean Mariner on the wings. Katoni Staggs, Selwyn Cobbo are the centers. You go to the 5'8", Ezra Mann with Adam Reynolds, the captain. He's halfback. Front row is Corey Jensen and Payne Haas with Billy Walters as the hooker. Uh, Brendan Piakura is able to play this game. It was a bit of an interesting and weird timing on the American to Australian time zone in regards to the HIA rule. Uh, but he is able to play here, which is great. Jordan Ricky as well in the back row. And then Patrick Carrigan is the lock. You go to the interchange. Tyson Smoothie, Fletcher Baker, Kobe Hetherington, and Martin Tapau. With the reserves being Corey Oates, Xavier Willison, Tristan Saylor, Jock Madden, and Jaden Hunt. Now, that Broncos team lineup there is pretty much what you would expect there. Uh, look, obviously... It wasn't a great game in Vegas, but you do have to give them a little bit of credit and say they didn't make the grand final last year. They've still got the players that should be competitive, and they definitely should be you know, looking to get back onto those winning ways. But the Broncos do have a real tough first five rounds, and then after that, the draw really opens up for them. It really does make... It's, it's actually one of the easier draws post round five. It's just that first five rounds is an absolute brutal stretch. So, you know, they could easily, you know, lose majority of these opening games and then still pump home strong, right? Which is exactly what I'm about to say about the other team there. Uh, but yeah, the Broncos, they've got their team outside of the, the a couple of injuries here. And but it's just that those losses of those players, I need to see this week really kind of be removed from how the thought process is because, again, the, the way that we saw that game against the Roosters, it, they did seem to lose a lot from those losses overall, right? Uh, but there we go. That's the Broncos. Let's go to the Rabbitohs. Jai Gray, Michael Cheekham, Peter Mamozelas, Shakai Mitchell, Tane Milne, and Talis Duncan come into the team with Jacob Host and Jai Arrow out, which is just, yeah, it's awful to see that Jai Arrow could be out for the season. Uh, we all know he's a great player and, and, and definitely deserves to be in there. But, you know, it, it's just another injury to the Rabbitohs right now that are really finding it tough in this early point, which is what I said in my preseason prediction stream that, uh, and video that the first part of the year, they will struggle and then come home like a train. I could definitely still see them winning the competition despite this. It's just that the first five to seven weeks or so, and then obviously Campbell Graham's way later in the season, but overall they will piece it together late. It just comes down to Jason Demetrio, Lachlan Elias, and those injuries, and then just kind of figuring it all out. But the team lineup here for the Rabbitohs, Latrell Mitchell is the fullback with Alex Johnston and Jacob Gagai on the wings. Richard Kenner and Isaiah Tass in the centers. You got Cody Walker as the 5'8", Lachlan Elias is the halfback. Tavita Totola and Sean Kepi front row. Damian Cook is the hooker. You've got in the back row, Keon Kalamatangi and Talis Duncan, which is an interesting one. Cameron Murray is the captain and lock. Interchange-wise, Saliva Havili, David Mowali, Shakai Mitchell, and Thomas Burgess with Michael Cheekam, Tane Milne, Jai Gray, Peter Mumble-Zellis, and Dean Hawkins as the reserves. 
the way that I glance over this team, Talis Duncan, massive in there. Uh, and probably going to lock down that spot for quite some time. So definitely someone to look at for super coach and fantasy. Uh, I definitely am going to be bringing him in this week for sure. The only reason I didn't bring him in before the season was because Jairo was there and they didn't put him on the team. But now he's gone straight into that starting back row. So that is an absolute big one there. Uh, I thought that, uh, you know, their front rowers were fine. Nothing spectacular, uh, obviously, over there in Vegas. And we just still, again, need to see more from Ilias on the attacking front. It was great to see him chase down Jason Saab, though, over there. But, you know, there is still those question marks in regards to this spine. Uh, Latrell did have a good game. Wasn't the worst fullback in Vegas. Wasn't the best fullback in Vegas. But Trell did have a good game where he was getting involved quite a bit. And, uh, yeah, you look at that 2 through 5, and as I Tass and Alex Johnson, fine, love them. Richard Kenner and Jacob Gagai are a bit of an interesting pair. I'm not a big fan of Kenner's defense. I'm not a great deal uh, happy with his attack either. Uh, but Jacob Gagai had a, a great game over there for mine when he got the ball. So, yeah, look, I think that my prediction in this game is that I am going to predict the Broncos. I will say that the uh, the Broncos will win this game. I do think that it's going to be a 1-12-er. I don't think either team's going to win this 13+. plus. If there was going to be a 13 plus, I would with the Broncos, especially with them being at Suncorp Stadium. But I just think the Broncos are going to be at home, a lot to prove. You know, that maybe they'll be playing for the Ezra Mam situation to really kind of get that win and get the vibes back on the right track because there has been a lot of controversy in regards to the Broncos, obviously, with the Spencer Lenny Ezra Mam situation. So I think that them being back at home. I know they're playing a decent Rabbitohs side here, but I just think the Rabbitohs are going to take some weeks before we start to really see them click on. Uh, so I will take the Broncos this one. I might say by, you know, six to eight points. I could even see it being a field goal, but I just feel like the, the Broncos will have a close win, but a dominant win with that being said as well. Uh, also, I need to see a lot more of that out of their forward pack. I know Pierre Crew went out injured early days, Payne Huss was great, but Corey Jensen, need more. Jordan Rickey, need a lot more. And Patrick Harrigan is one of the best locks in the game. We just didn't get it in that first game, right? So I feel like this Broncos team will improve drastically in this second game and get the win uh, in close but dominant enough fashion. And people who know rugby league know what I'm referring to when I say that. Uh, Aguero says, I'm, I'm in a tipping comp and the person coming first only has four tips, right? Wow, well, I'm top of your tipping comp then. <laughs> I'm top of your tipping comp then. TJ Tower says, Broncos will beat the Bunnies th plus 13. First home game, we really want to start their season strong and want to end it strong as well. Uh, yeah, definitely, man. Yeah, I don't know. I can see a world where they win 13+. I definitely can. Uh, I just feel like the Rabbitohs still have enough talent in their team to keep this relatively close. But I will say the Broncos win in dominant fashion, but in a close game. You know, like a real gritty kind of affair where there is enough points scored in the game, but the Broncos just overall, you can tell they're going to win from the outset kind of deal. Uh, Christian Kessler, I would love to back my team here, Rabbitohs fan for everyone, uh, but I've got to be real, I think the Bronx kind of do us dirty here by like 14 points-ish. We're going to see it. Again, I, I, I think that people are underestimating. Like, I think that the odds for the Rabbitohs at $3.07 up there, I think that's a bit much. I think it should be like a 280, 270 kind of deal. I can understand why they go into that with all the injuries that they do have and the question marks they have around their team still. But I do think the Rabbitohs with Latrell Mitchell, you know, Cody Walker, Zai Tash, Johnston, uh, Damian Cook, uh, Kalama Tungi, the inclusion of Talos Duncan, Cameron Murray, I think they do still have a solid enough team, right, to, to keep this one at least close enough. But I, I, I do still take the Broncos for sure. Uh, Peter Vesas, don't forget your bet on the Mad Dragons vodcast. Uh, no, we've been talking about that, but in the same sense, they're trying to change the bet around, which is really weird. Um, but yeah, no, we're... we're we're fine with that one, man. We're fine with that one. That, that, that's no sweat off the... Uh, that's, not, that's no sweat. It's just that we're not changing it. Like, it, it is kind of how it was outlined at first. Like, there's no worries with that. Uh, TJ Tower says, Broncos 28-16. Christian Kess is so glad to meet sure I decided to go Duncan instead of host. I agree. I think Duncan definitely is his opportunity. Uh, Ethan Rumble says, to be honest, after the way... Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, touch with the dry recovers, but he doesn't help that I have Duncan in my super coach. Oh, he does help that I have Duncan myself because, yeah, well, at least you don't have to burn a trade for it. You know, like, uh, this is the trade rage kind of moment, yeah? Like, this is this is uh, where you start to rage trade your whole team based on one game, which is just not what you do. Uh, I'll make probably a couple of changes, but it's not out of rage. It's just out of, I think there are better players that I can grab in the team, and Duncan is definitely one of them. Well, <coughs> sorry. Uh, Broncos 1 at 12, Lockham Hampton says, Dr. Forster, I feel like South Bench gets them over the line. Uh, Saliba Havili, David Mowali, Shakai Mitchell, and Thomas Burgess, Martin Tapu, Kirby Hetherington, Fletcher Baker, and Smoothie. Rabbitohs do have a better uh, depth in the bench. They do have a better bench, in my personal opinion. And the forward packs are kind of similar in a lot of ways. 
but the back line, I think, for the... Uh, I guess you could make an argument that these two teams are in very similar situations, just the Rabbitohs have the injuries, which is why I do think the Rabbitohs uh, actually have a better chance of winning the competition this year than the Broncos. But it'll be an interesting game, man. I can't wait for it on Thursday night. It should be a uh, should be a big one. So I will take the Broncos in this game. I will take them by 1-12. I'm going to go by 8 points or 6 points, a close enough win, uh, but also in dominant enough fashion as well. But all right. Let's go now into the next game, which is the Cronulla Sharkies taking on the Canterbury Bulldogs. Now, guys, obviously, hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you are new around here. This is the early game on Friday night for everyone who's down there in New South Wales. We go by Queensland time here, uh, and that's why it says 5 p.m., but it's 6 p.m. for you guys. Uh, Sharkies coming to this in 8th with well, the Bulldogs 15th. The Sharks $1.32 to the Bulldogs $3.41. And that's why I find it crazy, right, with the Rabbitohs being such heavy underdogs. They're close enough in odds to the Broncos as the Bulldogs are to the Sharks, which just doesn't make sense to me. You know, and I think that this kind of does make sense. This These odds do make sense. Uh, with especially being at Shark Park after the way the Sharkies did dispose of the Warriors. You know, to go over that a little bit as well before we get into the two team lineups, the Sharks in that Warriors game were dominated for 20 minutes, right? They absolutely got, you know, slaughtered by the Warriors, but the Warriors couldn't score an, as many points as they probably should have. They scored two tries, and you kind of thought, okay, the Sharks are looking like the same old Sharks, but then their defensive effort and then their attacking effort in the next 60 minutes was just out of this world. So, really impressed by the Sharks' resilience in that game. That really does seem to maybe turn the tide on what they are as a club uh, without being being able to beat those top eight teams, which is what I said before the season started, that this team has so much to prove in the early days that they can take down these top eight teams. Now, this game is obviously not one of them, but the last game definitely was, and yet the Sharks do still have the easiest draw of the entire season, but it's just that we pinpoint. What we do is we look at the calendar, we pinpoint those games where they've taken on those big-time teams from last year, this year, whatever, and then that's how we kind of really have to focus on because it doesn't. This game won't change my mind on the Sharks at all if they lose, maybe. But if they win, it won't change my mind on the Sharks at all, despite them being two and two. Uh, and then you go to the Bulldogs, who obviously got put away by the Eels. Uh, I obviously didn't watch this game. I was at the Titans game at Seabass, so. I wasn't able to watch it, uh, but there was a lot of reports that Dogs didn't play awfully and the Eels were good, but not fantastic. But they still got beaten 13 plus. Like they still got beaten by a hefty little margin there. So that kind of tells me more worrying signs than good in regards to that, uh, which is, yeah, uh, something that I, I'm, I'm definitely not unexpecting of with the Bulldogs this year, that they can compete in games but still get beaten quite well because I'm not, I, I don't rate this roster a great deal, right? But this is at Sharky Park. Let's get into the Cronulla Sharks lineup. Daniel Atkinson, Jaden Beryl, Samuel Stone Street, and Tukuhau Tapuha are in with no outs. The fullback, Will Kennedy, with Siona Katoa and Ronaldo Montalo on the wings. So to see he's not injured. Uh, C.S. Fatalakai and Jesse Ramian are the centers. We've got Braden Trimble on the 5'8", Nico Hines as the halfback. You go to the front row as Toby Rudolph and Oregon Kafusi. Blake Braley is the hooker. You go to the back row, Britt Nakora and Teague Wilton, with the 13 being Cameron McInnes, his captain. Interchange-wise, Dal Finucane, Jack Williams, Royce Hunt, and Thomas Hazelton, with the 18th, uh, well, with the reserves being Kyle Eero, Tukahau Tapuha, who I do rate, uh, Daniel Atkinson, Samuel Stone Street, and Jaden Beryl. So this Sharks team, pretty much exactly what you saw on the game against the Warriors. I think this is going to be a, a team that people have underestimated going into this year. I did say their back line is really solid. Like it's a, I, I'd argue that as a collective, they could be top four, top five uh, back line of the game. Uh, I would say overall, and people do, they don't really take as much notice because they don't watch enough Sharks games to be fair. But overall, they don't take as much notice. And Will Kennedy is one of those guys that is a great player. Will never get the respect because it just doesn't have that. He doesn't have the X Factor that people are used to. He does have a little bit of X Factor, but it's just not what you kind of look at purely for X Factor, right? It's a bit of a weird one. So yeah, this Sharks team is solid, and their four pack did a job against the Warriors as well. You know, they were really able to, you know, lock them down defensively, and the Warriors are a better attacking team than the Dogs, so that's what the issue could be here for the Doggies. But let's get into their team lineup. Bronson Cherry, Jake Turpin, Kitiani Kamtonga, and Toby Sexton in, with the outs being no one. Just to clarify as well, guys, 
when we're going through the ins and the outs, at this point of the season, usually it's just going to be in regards to the reserves and whatnot, right? You're not, unless it's an injury, you're not going to see a great deal of changes there. But uh, Blake Taff is the fullback with Blake Wilson and Con Tracy on the wing. Joshua Dakar is injured. Uh, Dogs fans in the chat, I'll read in a second. Can you tell me if he's playing in two weeks' time against the Titans? Uh, Jacob Kraz and Stephen Crichton are the centers, with the 5'8 being Matty Burton and Drew Hutterson is the halfback. Ooh. Max King and Paisa Fama Wasili are the front rowers, with Reid Marnie as the hooker. You've got a Viliami Kikau and Jacob Press in the back row. Jamin Salmon is the lock, with Kurt Mann, Samuel Hughes, Josh Curran, and Curtis Marin in a change. Reserves, Bronson Cherry, Kitiani Kaltonga, Jake Turpin, Toby Sexton, and Josh Adakar. So I would assume that he probably is playing two weeks' time if he's still on the reserves there. It mustn't be too bad of an injury. Uh, looking over this Bulldogs lineup here, not a fan of, of Blake Taff in the fullback, really. really. Uh, you go to the back line, though, overall, two through five. Blake Wilson can make quite a few mistakes, but you know there should be still enough attack in this this two through five to, to get them by, but then you just go to the halves and that's where the biggest worry is. I've, I've been saying to you guys, I've been very vocal about the fact that I don't think Matt Burton is a 5'8", I don't think he's a half, but he's also still the, probably the best 5'8 they've got at the club unless they wanted to put Toby Sex into that role and then shift Burton, maybe to fullback. You know, maybe, maybe you put Burton in fullback and see how that one goes because I just don't think that he is a half. And Hutcho, I think that realistically Toby Sexton should be there if they're going to persist with Matty Burton, the 5'8". Uh, and then, when you go into the forwards here, I think it's crazy that Josh Curran isn't starting in 13 over Jamin Salmon. Uh, I think that Max King is a great player, but I also think that he's a great second in charge. I don't like that he's the leader of this kind of Bulldogs pack. He's kind of the guy that you look at as the, the best front rower there, which you kind of usually look at as the leader of the, the forwards. And uh, unfortunately, I, I think that he's sec he should be second in charge to the big bopper, right? And that's not me saying that he's a bad player at all. I love Maxi King. He is a really solid player, but I just don't think that he's that guy. And he's definitely better than Puasa Fun or Silly in my personal opinion, right? So, um, yeah, I think that there is still a lot of holes in this Bulldogs team. I think there is still a lot of Bulldogs team. I, I, I am going to take the Sharkies in this 113+. plus. I think that they will... With what they showed against the Warriors, they should be able to win this one quite well. Uh, I think that Bulldogs fans, you have to keep your excitement alive. You have to keep your hope alive. Uh, trust me, I know your feelings. Uh, I can tell you that for free. But overall, the Sharks should, should still have a bit more than what this Dogs team can provide. Defensively, they're just not that great. Attacking-wise, it comes from your halves. And the halves are really kind of hurting this team, in my personal opinion. And we still need to see Reid Marnie get back to what he was when he was at the Yields. It just hasn't happened yet. So, sorry, Doggies fans. I am going to have to go against you this week. Uh, and I will have to go against you next week as well. Uh, but the Sharkies, uh, I will go in this one thirteen plus. Uh, Book of Suns, Broncos 28-24. Uh, Book of Suns, the Sharks 13 plus, 42 to 18. Do they give up 18 points? Do they give up 18 points? How many points did they give up to the Warriors? Did they only give up the 12 points to the Warriors in the end? I can't remember. I think it was. Uh, point of the matter is, is that I don't think the Bulldogs score 18 points on them. They need good halves for that to be the case, man. They need a good platform for the forwards. And, you know, overall, like this, this forward pack has... A lot of X Factor without like the crazy. It is a small four pack, right? But it has a lot of X Factor without the crazy solidity. I wouldn't say the Puasa Fumo Silly is crazy, like in regards to the 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 floor. You know, you need like a solid enough floor there with those front rowers. Max King is solid enough, but it's just Puasa Fumo Silly. Lot to prove still. Salmon is just a, a, a brain baffling one that he's starting over Curran. Um, yeah, look, I just, uh, I'm just i just really concerned with this Bulldogs team, and I'm concerned with, with how Cameron Serraldo was piecing it together. Uh, what do I know, right? I'm just another person here watching the game, but in the same sense, I watch every single game. You know, I watch, you know, I've been watching this all my life, and I think the Bulldogs fans, if you take it, you know, look at it from a different direction and from a different perspective, you can understand what I'm saying in regards to this Bulldogs team, that there is a long way to go with it still. There just is a long way to go with it. Uh, Christian Kett says, I hope White can show up our left side of fence. Um, Christian Kett, Sam, let's keep it, let's, let's keep it in regards to, um, the games, please, brother, this, yeah. Uh, Sam Jenkins says, Connor Tracy, baby. Yeah, Connor Tracy gets a crack as well. Uh, obviously, you don't really pick and choose your predictions and your tips based off of a winger, uh, but I do think that Connor Tracy does, you know, bring a lot to kind of what this team can do. I do think that he is a guy that I'd even look at as a fullback over Blake Taff. I just, I've never really rated Blake Taff if you guys watch this channel enough. So I, I, I don't mind Conor Tracy coming in there, but again, he's on the wing. So that doesn't change my prediction at all. 
Uh, Slubber says 80 plus the Sharkies. Uh, Harrison Whitaker says up the Sharks. Sharks versus Bulldogs definitely going to be a good game. Don't know if it's going to be a good game, man. We'll be live, but I think it'll be a blowout. I think it'll be a blowout. But that's my prediction there, guys. I'm going to take the Sharkies 13 plus. Uh, still a long way to prove otherwise, is what I'll say. And I'll say this the same thing about the Titans next week. A long way to prove otherwise. Uh, and that's why I'm pretty happy to... Um, yeah, that's why I'm pretty happy to. Yeah, maybe Slap Rizzo calls a Sharkies fan, Sam Jenkinson. We'll, we'll, he'll slip up one day. He will slip up one day, the big fella. He will. But I'll take Sharks 13 plus here. Long way to prove for the doggies. Let's now move into this next game, which is a big, big bopper game. The Benrith Panthers, baby, taking on the Parramatta of the Squeals. The Parramatta of the Squeals. Obviously, guys, hit that like button. Subscribe if you are new around here. The Panthers coming to this game in 11th, whilst the Eels coming to this game in 3rd. Panthers are dull 39 favourites against the Eels with three dollars 3 underdogs. This is at Blue Bat Stadium in Penrith. Uh, Panthers obviously coming to this game after a really confusing game against the Storm. Where the Storm, like, I, I think that why I say that's confusing is that people have misread the game overall. I think that the Panthers were still quality overall in the second half, maybe not the first half. But the Storm were just so... They're so defying and dominant in regards to that round one. They hold that with pride, that round one record since like 2001, right? I was like seven years old the last time I lost a round one. And they hold that with pride. And you could just see that the Storm wanted it more in this situation. Again, I think the Panthers finish above the Storm this year. Uh, but that game there was a real dominant performance there by the Storm to hold the Panthers out who were throwing a lot at them in attack. Right, so I do think the Panthers are a lot better still than people are giving credit for. They're not going to win the comp. People say it's like they haven't proven shit against that yet. But it's still a little bit to wait before we start to write the Panthers and, and write their name out, right? It'd be great for the NRL for somebody else to win it. But at the end of the day, the Panthers at this current point in time, for me, are still the favourites of the competition. But they are taking on the Parramatta Squeals, who, you know, did dispose of the doggies well enough. Uh, they do have a team that I think is going to do well for at least the first half of this season. And they do love a game against Panthers in the regular season. They do usually beat the Panthers when it comes to regular season, but when it comes to the crunch games and the finals and whatnot, uh, they turn into spuds, you know? Like, they just don't know how to... The, the direction just gets completely lost when it gets to the finals against the Panthers. But the regular season, they are experts at beating the Panthers. So, you know, I do weigh that into account. I, I don't take it crazy... Like, I don't just base it completely off of history. But also, the players that have been for both these teams of the last couple of years where the Eels have won the regular season have been pretty much the same kind of players. So it does show that the Eels do know how to get up for this game, do know how to win the Battle of the West when it doesn't count, really. <laughs> you know, but it's going to be a tough one here because the Panthers are coming off the back of two straight losses, one to Wigan, controversially, and then one to the Storm, whilst the Eels are coming in off a, a win against their rivals and the Bulldogs. So getting two wins over two rivals to start their season would be huge there for the Eels. But for the Panthers... They're in. So Brad Schneider, Maverick Geyer, Mitch Kenny, Paul Alamotti, and Scotty Sorensen are in with Luke Summerton being out. He was a trap man. If you got him on Supercoach, he was a massive trap because he knew Mitch Kenny was coming back this week. You go to the fullback, Dylan Edwards with the wingers being Sonia Taruva, Tosoviti, and Brian Toto. I go to the centres, Isaac Tungo and Taylor May with Jerome Lewis, the 5'8", and Nathan Cleary, captain halfback. You go to the front row is Moses Leota and James Fisher Harris with the 9 being Mitch Kenny. Scott Sorensen and Liam Martin back row is I, Yo is the lock. Sonny Luke, uh, Lindsay Smith, Liam Henry, and Luke Garner are the interchange with Dane Laurie, Matty Eisenhut, Maverick Guy, Paul Almonte, and Brad Schneider as the reserves. So this Panthers team is exactly what you're thinking right now. Uh, they do have a very, very solid forward pack, and their back line is just as great as ever. I don't think we read too heavily into that round one performance. I don't think we read too heavily into their World Club Challenge. I do think that the Panthers will absolutely be up for this game, especially at home. And oh, I can't remember what happened last year in round two. They lost round one, obviously, the Broncos 13-12. I can't remember what happened in round two. I think they could have won big, but I could be completely wrong there, right? But overall, uh, this Panthers side has no excuses uh, to, to not win this game, right? Now we go to the Eels. Luca Moretti, Makahesi Makotoa, Ofahiki Ogden, and Wirmu Greg with the outs being Nada. You go to the fullback, Clinton Gutson. He's a captain with Bailey Simonson and Sean Russell on the wings. Will Penasini and Morgan Harper are the centers. You go to the 5'8", Dylan Brown with the halfback being Mitchell Moses. Front row is Regan Campbell-Gillard and Junior Bolo with the 9 being Joey Lusick. Back row is Sean Lane and Bryce Cartwright with the 13 being Jermaine Hopgood. 
Interchange wise, Brandon Hands, Ryan Madison, Joe Offahengawi, and Kamal Tuolangi, with Offahengi Ogden, uh, William McGregg, Luca Mor Moretti, uh, Makahesi Makotowa, and Blaze Tolangi as the reserves there. So, yeah, look, the, this Eels team, they have a good enough team. Morgan Harper had a great game against the Doggies. They have a good team. You know, people just look at it as the Eels, where I get it, but they do have a solid enough team. I think Joey Lusick and Brandon Hands don't really get it going for me. Bryce Cartwright had a great game against the Dogs. Uh, their forward pack is something that they probably should rely upon. Uh, their back line is solid, but you can see moments where Mitchell Moses and Dylan Brown do disappear. Uh, Gutho is going to do his job as he always does at the back, and then that 2 through 5 is okay. I think that at the end of the day, if they're looking to improve somewhere on this roster, it does have to be in that 2 through 5. Uh, you know, Will Penasini needs to really prove himself off the you know potential that we've seen in the past. Bailey Simonson is fine. Morgan Harper is fine. Uh, better than people give him credit for based off of that one game against Talakai. And then Sean Russell is fine, right? So if there's a place to, to look at, it is outside backs there for the Eels. I think there's one coming on the market uh, after this year. Uh, Eels fans, uh, that comes from a place called Cogra. Uh, but overall, and that would improve your team. It would improve your team. So overall, this is a tough game to predict, but I am going to tip the Panthers in this one. I am. I'm going to go against what I, I probably should. I know they're thirty nine favorites, but I do think that should be a lot closer. I think it should be like a dollar seventy to two dollars thirty kind of deal. Uh, I just think that the Panthers are going to be out for a bit of revenge on kind of how round one played out, getting held to zero. I think they could score in this game early and then just kind of piece them apart from there. Uh, if they do lose this game, there there will start to be a few irks that people will find with the Panthers in regards to hunger to go and win a fourth premiership straight. And you'll see that when I was saying before the season started, the reason I didn't tip the Panthers is because I think the hunger will start to fade. I know that there's the Luai kind of narrative right now that it's his last year there, so they want to go and win it again for him. But they have also still won three premierships with him. So that although that is kind of how they're kind of defining their hunger, at the end of the day, there are other teams who are trying to win for the sake of it's the first time in 38 years with the Eels, or 30 years with the Raiders, or 17 years with... No, nearly 20 years. Oh, no, it is 17, 18 years now for the Broncos. You know, there are those other teams that will have a lot more hunger. So I am going to rely upon the fact that I do think that player by player, overall, the Panthers have a better team here, and that they do want this game more. But I will take them in 1-12, and I will take them by two points. I will take them by two points here. I think the Eels will be up for it, and uh, they'll, they'll prove themselves as a bit of a better team than people do give them credit for. Uh, Dinky Link says Penrith never beat Power in the regular season. I do know that. I do know that one, yeah. But I am still going to lean with the Panthers in this one. Uh, Christian Kerr says Power versus Penrith in regular season. That's an easy Paramount tip. <laughs> Ali Mates says Panthers beat Power. Penrith don't lose twice in a row. And Para won't win consecutive games. Demi Maiden's bench was weak last week. A bit better this week for the Eels game. Uh, there was a lot of weeks there. One of them was mis misspelt the incorrect way. Uh, but let me, bench was weak last week, but better this week for the Eels game. What's their bench looking like again? Brennan Hands, Madison, off and go and Tualangi. That's a solid enough bench. Yeah, that's a solid enough bench there for sure. Uh, but then, you, you know, this bench here for the Panthers is... I'd actually probably say the Eels bench is better. I'd say the Eels bench is better there. Some of Luke had a good game against the Storm, in my personal opinion. But I would say that Eels bench is better. Uh, but then when you go to the actual teams here, I do think overall the Panthers do edge him out for sure. They do edge him out. Uh, Harrison Whitaker says, uh, Grand Final Rematch. It is a Grand, no, grand Final Rematch. It's saying a Grand Final... Oh, it's a Grand Final Rematch from a couple of years ago. Uh, 2022, but not last year. That's my name. is Panthers to win. So was Fanboy says, I would say it's a, it is crazy to predict Penrith go 0-2, but Paris seem to always beat Penrith in regular season. I think because everyone's thinking that, we'll probably find it that it goes opposite. I, I think that because everyone is thinking that, it, it might go opposite. But it'll be, it'll be an interesting game, man. I can't wait to stream it on uh, Friday night with you guys. Uh, Richard and Raika says Para beat Penrith. Lachlan Hampton says I would put Junior on the bench and Joe starting. He makes an impact coming off the bench. Oh, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. I personally wouldn't, uh, but I, I can understand where you're coming from in that situation. Uh, Demi Maiden says Eels' confidence must be high after beating the Dogs. Well, it's it's not the <laughs> players see the games very different to, different to you and I, right? I can tell you that from how I know my boys, right? Players see games very differently. Like, for example, they won't go in... If they listen to the fans every... Like, major, like they'll just kind of treat every game as easy, right? Like, if they listen to the fans, like, the fans are always very hyped about the team. But 
you know, the fans thought the Titans are going to get a massive win over the Dragons, right? But the the boys, they don't treat, they shouldn't be treating it like that, right? And we can kind of maybe tell that they did treat it like that. But overall, the Eels treat that game as a rivalry. The players treat that game as a rivalry. And the players treat that like they want to get a win over a rival team that they know the opposition team, despite their, you know, consensus in the fans, will still be up for it. So I don't, I, yeah, the Eels will be confident. I, I, I think the Eels will be confident, man. And they just need a little bit of confidence within this team. Uh, Chockies says, Fox Sports can't wait for Pants to lose round two. Yeah, they'll be posing forever and ever and ever. Uh, NRL Fanatic says, Eels will win. And last time I'll go before I go to the next game is Rich and Riker, who says, Para players are improving each year, I reckon. A lot of the players look better than ever. Uh, I wouldn't go as far to say improving each year. Last year, they tanked it. Last year, they didn't even make the eight. Um, you know, 2022, they made the grand final. But 2023, they didn't make the eight. So... There's a long way for me to prove that, but I, I would disagree with you in the sense that I wouldn't say they're improving each year uh, because last year they didn't. They came like 10th or whatever, 10th or 11th. So not necessarily, uh, but the Eels are a better team than people give them credit for, are a better team, and that's what I'll say. But I'll take the Panthers in this game by two points uh, in a nice little cheeky 1-12-er. Um, and yeah, I think they'll be out to try and prove against this Eels always beat us mentality in the regular season. But all right, let's go now into the next game. The first game on Saturday, absolute bolt. So this is exciting. Uh, guys, obviously hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new around here. We are on for the Canberra Raiders, who are fourth, taking on the West Tigers, who are ninth. Raiders, $1.45, whilst the Tigers are $2.76. And this is at GIO Stadium in Canberra. Jeez, how do I read this game? How does anybody read this game? This is, this is possibly the hardest game to read of the weekend, not for the greatest of reasons. And I know Raiders fans will take offense to that simply because I'm not giving them credit for the win against the Knights. But I am giving you credit for the win against the Knights. But I want to see it on a consistent level. I want to see you be able to do that again and again and again. It's very easy to... Well, not easy, but it's... It's a lot easier to get yourself up for that round one game to really get the season off to an absolute rocker, uh, especially against a Knights team that I personally believed was overrated coming into this season based off of their end of season form last year. I think that on paper, the Knights aren't as good as that, that kind of run, and the surprise factor was what got them on that run, and then now there's no surprise factor, and the Raiders are a team that can just grind out results, right? So I can understand why they're forty-five, but the Raiders do need to go on and do it again and again and again before I start to get that confidence in this team that they are a top eight team overall, right? And then you go to, and just to clarify, it was a good win in Newcastle, but again, I just think the Knights are a bit overrated in that sense. Um, I was still happy to tip them over the Raiders, and I do think the Raiders will lose games by 13 plus. And I know I got a comment about this last week, but I do think that Raiders will lose more often than not by a 13 plus margin still until proven otherwise. Prove me wrong. This game, however, will not change my mind on that. It just unless it's the Tigers winning 13 plus, but this game won't change my mind on that. I'm talking games when you're playing the Panthers. I'm talking games when you're playing the Bronx. I'm talking games when you're playing, you know, even even go as far as the Eels, you know, the Warriors, the Sharkies, all these kind of teams are at Roosters. So I need to see it happen. With the Tigers, however, obviously this is their first game. They had the bye in week one. Uh, they've got an interesting lineup that we'll get into today uh, where they're not actually playing Aiden Caesar, which is really intriguing. Uh, but the Tigers are believing in a fresh journey, right? They've gotten rid of their organization. They're really kind of trying to tinker with, within. They've got Benji Marshall there who hasn't proven anything yet. So I, I'm not willing to kind of bank on and just say that, yeah, no, he's going to be a good coach because he's a good player. Because we've seen many times before that that's not the case. Uh, and and still quite young, Benji. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be... And that was also a decision made by the previous part of the organization. So... I will wait and see in regards to that. And I continuously tell you guys, I think the Tigers should improve from next year. They should start improving from next year with Luai. But do you rely on Luai as an individual player to really pick it up on the team? I would hope so, because they've gone balls to the wall for him. I would hope so. Uh, but we're going to have to wait and see on that one. Now, the Raiders, they're in. Sebastian Chris, Simi Sasungi, Trey Mooney, and Zach Wolford in, with the outs being Nada. Jordan Rapana is the fullback, with Albert Hopawade and Xavier Savage on the wings. Matty Tomoko and Sebastian Chris are in the centres. Go to the 5 8 Ethan Strange with Jamal Fogarty. Got a good game in the halfback. Josh Papali'i and Joseph Tarpany are the front rowers. Tarpany is the captain with Danny Levi as the hooker. Hudson Young and Zach Hosking are the back row with Morgan Smithies as the lock. Tom Starling, Emre Gula, Atamariota, and Pasami Saulo are the interchange with the reserves being Nick Kotrich, K.O. Weeks, Simi Sasangi, Zach Wolford, and Trey Mooney. So this Reyes team is what you expect. They've got a crazy solid forward pack. You love that. Morgan Smithies had an unreal debut last week. 
against the Knights, Zach Hosking as well. Uh, Hudson Young was fine. Joseph Tarpany was solid. Josh Papaliti was fine. Dane Levi got injured, but scored a try in the game. So I love that forward pack there with the Raiders, which we all knew about. But the question marks do still come from that one through seven. I don't think that they're as... I think they're all just kind of solid. Uh, it, it, we need to see it again and again and again with this back line. We do. Uh, we. I, I don't... Jamal Fogarty is a baseline player with a upper edge on the baseline player. Had a good game against the Knights. And this is a game for him to kill as well because it is against the Tigers. But as well, we do need to kind of rein in our kind of expectations on him and expectations on that back line because there isn't an incredible amount of X-Factor there. Jordan Rapana, maybe back in the day, did. Abel Mahuare, not so much. Tomoko, I wouldn't say X-Factor. I'd say really solid, but not X-Factor. Sebastian Chris, not so much. And Xavier Savage is probably the one that you look at for that, that X-Factor. We just haven't really seen it yet. So uh, that's, yeah, my kind of concerns there with the Raiders. But the, the forward line should keep them in you know, uh, it should be winning games against teams like this. But then again, they've gone up against a team that does have a solid enough four-pack themselves. So the Tigers, no wins announced, obviously, because it's their first game. Dream Buller. Dream the Dream Buller is the fullback with Charlie Staines and Junior Tupo on the wings. Stafford Toa and Solomon Fatape are the centers. You go into the six, which is Lachlan Galvin. The seven halfback is Jaden Sullivan. So... Ah, uh, man. Uh, interesting. Uh, you go to the front rowers, Stefano Utukamanu and David Klemmer, with the nine being Api Saikotori Sao, who is the captain. Back row is Ai Papali'i and John Bateman, with Alex Seafarth as the lock. You go to the interchange. Aiden Caesar, Fenua Pole, uh, Alex Twal, and Samuela Fuainu, with the reserves being Asu Kepoa, Talon De Silva, Justin Matamua, Alex Lobb, and Jake Simpkins. So, yeah, interesting. They've got Aiden Caesar playing as their 14. They decided to go with an incredibly young Harvest pairing there, which could absolutely blow up in their face. Uh, absolutely. I think that when you overlook this Tigers team, Dream Ball is great, but that 2 through 5 is yikes, um, in my personal opinion, anyway. That 2 through 5 as a collective is, is quite yikes. Olam apparently picked up an injury in that Dragons game of preseason. Uh, but that 2 through 5 is something that is massive question marks. The question marks on the 6 and 7, you can't talk about enough. There's It's so high in regards to the question marks there. Uh, there's not much that I really complain about the forwards, except for maybe Alex Seafarf as that lock. Uh, and the interchange is actually solid enough. I actually like their interchange. But it's just that that back line, that, one, that 2 through 7 is wowzers in regards to question marks. And the forwards are solid enough. So for me, I'm taking the Raiders in this game. I don't think they could win this game third and plus. Like, they could. But I think the Tigers will be up for it with it being their first game. But I do think the Raiders should be able to win this game and win this game well. I, I'm actually going to predict a third and pluser. Uh, and I don't I do not do that much with the Raiders. But I'm going to predict a third and pluser here. I could even just say a simple 1 and 12. But I just think that you go across these two lineups and this Raiders team should still be putting the sword at this Tigers team. And we're going to say there's a lot about the Tigers this year, guys. Uh, but I just think the Raiders should be winning this one and, and winning this one well. If they are to prove that they are the team from that Newcastle Knights game, the Raiders have to be winning this one and winning this one well. So I will take the Raiders 13+. plus. Uh, but it could easily be blown up in my face if they, that 6 and 7 do work out. Lock and Galvin and Sullivan do work out for the Tigers. Uh... But there's just a, there's just too many question marks for me to back that Tigers team in, and it is in Canberra. Um, so if the Raiders have the kind of form that they had when they played, um, yeah, if they have if they play like they did against the Knights in this one, the Tigers are worse than the Knights, right? So the Raiders should get a significant enough win. A Richard and Araka says Raiders will smash the Tigers if they play it last week. I agree. Harrison Whitaker says Raiders will win. My tip, easy tip, I think. Uh, I don't think it's easy, but I think that uh, it's confident. I'd say it's confident. Um, Richard Riker says, is that another of John's kids, the Hopawade boy? He's solid as in well played well and played well, the young fella. Uh, yeah, he's fine. Uh, uh, John's kids? Uh, oh, uh, John Hopawade. Sorry, I was thinking Andrew John's. Uh, maybe. I'd assume so. I don't know. I don't know. You'd have to kind of do the research on that one yourself, to be fair. But, um, yeah, no, I'd, I'm not too too sure. But I'll probably assume so. Cruz Mosson said, I think the Raiders will be too good. A 13-plus win. Uh, Dasha says, I can see this going to Golden Point, maybe. Ooh, that's a bold call. I, I, that's a bold call. That's a bold call. Um, I think the Raiders should be too good, though. Cruz Mosson says, Tigers team looking average. Who is Caesar? Why is Caesar on the bench? That's shit, but I think Tigers going to lose by at least 18. The reason why I would play Aiden Caesar is for the sole purpose of that, that those halves are too young. Sullivan is a brand new half in this team. He came across from the Dragons, and Lachlan Galvin is still coming out of the womb. You know, So 
Uh, it's great for Habapi Sakotawi Sao there in the hooker to lead him around and Dream Bottles great at the back, but you know, your points are going to come off your, your halves who are going to put set up your, your back line, and your back line is concerning, to say the least. So I would have still kept Caesar in regards to experience because you could destroy Lachlan Galvin's career and you could definitely put the boot into to Jaden Sullivan as well by not having these guys play with an experienced half. You know, and, and this is the same thing that I say about with the Titans and whatnot with Tanner Boyd. You know, at least Lachlan Millies has Cody Walker there, but Tanner Boyd, foreign in and out, in and out, in and out. Uh, it, it, and Toby Saxon was the same thing. You need that. It, it, the Titans are proof that you need an experienced half alongside your youngsters uh, to make them work. And, and this one really concerns me. Really concerns me for sure. Uh, Lagan Baltic says Raiders first in the second round. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, so far you'd probably base it. You'd probably say that. You'd probably say that so far. Mitchell says, why are the Tigers allergic to playing Justin Matamua? I agree. I actually like Justin Matamua. Uh, I, I agree. He's, he's a lock, isn't he? He's a lock. I'm just not a big fan of Alex Seifarth. Uh, I, I'm just not a massive fan of Seifarth. But yeah, they just don't seem to play much more. Which means that they see something that we don't. Obviously, we do have to take that into account that they are with these guys week in, week out. Uh, and, and they know what their training is like. They know how they play. So there's there's a reason behind it. But yeah, I, I, I do like a bit of Justin much more myself. Walnut Hills has raised 13 plus, maybe a little bias, but they looked good last week and the Tigers looked eh in the trials. That's my tip. Uh, the Rays should be winning this game 13 plus for sure. They should be. They should be. Uh, Hayden, I've got Tigers at 16 and Dragons get Wooden Spoon finished 17. Thank you for that um, riveting information. Uh, Harrison Whitaker says, How can you say the. Oh, that's not to do with me. And Seeds on the Bench is very interesting. It is very interesting, Toby Stevens. I disagree with it. So I'm going to take the Rays 13 plus in this one. Uh, Tigers off to another harsh uh, reality start. All right, we go now into the final four games. We start off here with the Cowboys and Knights, which is a uh, point of topic right now in the chat. Uh, but it is the North Queensland Cowboys taking on the Newcastle Knights in Queen, uh, North Queensland. Let's go and hit that thumbs up button, guys. Subscribe if you are new around here. The North Queensland Cowboys coming this game in first. They had a big win on the weekend. They're a forty-two favourites. And the Knights, they're in 14th, are $2.90 underdogs. And it is at Queensland Country Bank Stadium in Townsville. Now, the Cowboys, another team that, you know, they had a great win against the Dolphins. But the Dolphins also played a really weird team. And they're doing it again this week where they're changing things that just don't make a great deal of sense. But this Cowboys team did look great in attack. And they did look solid enough in defense after they conceded those early couple of tries. Overall, the Cowboys had a great game, but it, it was against a Dolphins team that just looked like they didn't know their left from their rights, their up from their downs. They couldn't count to five in that game. Like They were really struggling overall, the Dolphins, and that's why I need to see that the Cowboys continue on with it. Now, the, the game that they're playing in this one won't really prove a great deal to me again. Like If you guys go and have a look at that like fun little live stream that we did where we went through every game of the season... I had the Cowboys to win like the first six games or whatever. Like I had the Cowboys to be top of the table after like six, seven rounds, but still they missed the eight, in my personal opinion, based off of that that um, that game by game. So yeah, again, the Cowboys have still a long way to prove that they are this team, but they are obviously better than the Dolphins who didn't know what they were doing whatsoever. So that's why I'm still hesitant on them. But they are the deserving favourites here. And the Newcastle Knights, they just disappointed massively against the Raiders. So, you know, they're at home at Donald Jones Stadium, had that massive run at the end of the year, uh, but just got absolutely uh, slap and mundos. You know, they got slap and mundos by a Raiders team that not many people rate this year still. Yeah, so the Knights, they need to really put themselves back on the right track. But this is going to be a tough game for them to do it when the Cowboys do have that confidence based on that Dolphins game. Now... The ins here for the Cowboys. Jack Kosiewski, Jake Clifford, Semi Valame, and Tom Chester with no outs. Scott Drinkwater is the fullback with Kyle Felt and Murray Zalangi on the wings. Valentine Holmes and Zach Labart in the centres. Zach Labart was brilliant on the weekend. Tom Didden is the 5'8 and co-captain uh, with Chad Townsend as the halfback. The front rowers, Jordan McLean and Jason Tamalolo with Reese Robson as the 9. Harlem Lukey and Jeremiah Nene are the back rowers with, I believe, Ruben Cotter as co-captain is the lock, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you're going with the interchange, Jake Ranville, Griffin Neem, Sammy McIntyre, and Kulikefu Futifuaki, uh, with the reserves being Tom Chester, Thomas McKayley, Sammy Valame, Jack Kosevsky, and Jake Clifford. So this Cowboys team, solid, a lot to prove still. Uh, great game against the Dolphins. Uh, looking for Scotty Drinkwater to kind of... He didn't need to involve himself in that game against the, the Dolphins, right? Like, the, they will kill him so much that Scotty Drinkwater didn't really de need to do a great deal. Uh, but I would expect him to really turn up in this game, especially when they're going up against that, that other opposition fullback. I do expect Scotty Drinkwater to have a good game here. And overall, if they can play like they did against the Dolphins, they should be winning this game well. They should be winning this game absolutely well. Uh, and I think that throughout the season, you know, this the forward pack... Uh, 
on paper is fine, it, it is quite solid, but I do think there is something that could be missing there as well in regards to going to that next step. And we'll see that once they take on the good teams, the big type teams. No offense, Knights and Dolphins, but I just don't have you in that kind of category right now. So yeah, long way to prove for the Cowboys for mine, but very good win against the Dolphins. Now, in regards to the Knights, Brody Jones, Fletcher Sharp, Matt Croker, Thomas Jenkins, Thomas Kant, and Will Price in with Dylan Lucas and Anari Tuala out. You go to the fullback, Caitlin Ponga. He is the captain with the wingers being Thomas Jenkins, who gets in over David Armstrong and Greg Martiu. The centers, Dane Gagai and Brian Best. 5'8", Tyson Gamble and Jackson Hastings as the halfback, with the front rowers being Jacob Saifidi and Leo, Leo Thompson. Number nine, Phoenix Crossland with Tyson Frizzell and Kai Pierce Paul back row. Dylan Lucas obviously injured. And then Adam Elliott is the lock. Jack Cogger, Daniel Saifidi, Jack Hetherington, and Jed Cartwright at the interchange with the reserves being Brody Jones, Will Price, Matt Croker, Fletcher Sharp, and Thomas Kant as the uh, as the reserves there. And this Knights team, it just doesn't jump off the paper at you. Like, obviously, Cameron Ponga does for sure. Their centers do. Greg Marcy does. Tom Jenkins doesn't. Halves, they don't jump off the paper at you. They're solid with a, like a kind of... Floor, a, a basic floor and not too high of a reach is what I would say, but they still know how to get the job done, which is why I say they've got a pretty solid enough floor, uh, but you're just not going to see an extreme amount of X Factor kind of coming from those halves, and I still believe Jack Cogger realistically should be playing in this team, and I found that, that was the biggest issue with the Knights on the weekend when they played the Raiders is that they had too many ball players on the field at one time. You know, they had Jacob Co they had Jack Cogger there, they had uh, Fence Crossland, they had Hastings, they had Gamble all on the field at one time, and I just didn't think that worked at all. Uh, I think the Crossland, uh, you know, Jaden Braley's injured, but although Crossland had a great back end of last year in 2023, obviously didn't translate into this year by any means. Looking forward to seeing Kai Pierce Paul. I think though that back row was really great, but I do think Dylan Lucas probably comes back into that. I don't know if Kai Pierce Paul is an 80 minute just yet, so it's a bit of a, a harsh one there with the injury to Lucas. But overall, like this four pack is solid enough there for the Knights, but I just I think that it's the I think overall it is the spine minus Ponga that does leave me with the most question marks. So I am going to tip the Cowboys in this one, and I have tipped all three, fa all, all the favourites really, haven't I, so far? I think I have. I could be wrong, uh, and I hate doing that. It means that I'm going to be wrong uh, somewhere along the line. Uh, but I just think the Cowboys should be should be too good in this one uh, based off of what we saw in round one. But again, that was one round. Uh, I will take the Cows. I think the Knights will be up for it, though. I'll go Cows 1-12. I'll go Cows 1-12, but the Cowboys still, for me, probably have the better team on paper. But their their forward packs are similar, and their back lines are actually quite similar. This could be a closer game than people imagine. And the the bench, I'd probably like the Knights. I think based off of round one, I, I, I find it too hard, especially with them in North Queensland. If this was in Newcastle, I actually may have tipped Newcastle. If this was in Newcastle, I may have tipped the Knights. But I will take the Cowboys here. Uh, I'll take them by 1 or 12. I think the Knights will be up for it, but we just need to, yeah, they, they need to kind of prove themselves a lot to get back into the winner's circle. Uh, Agro's Dragons won the comp. <laughs> Walnut Hills says, Cowboys looked all right last week, got a good win. Newcastle were disappointing, and I think the Cowboys at home probably a bit too strong for the Knights. Cowboys 13 plus. I think looking at too heavily into one game, that's why I'm saying, like, if this is in Newcastle, I think the Knights probably still win, even though they lost the Raiders in Newcastle. Uh, but I, I'm happy with the Cowboys at home if they can perform like they did last week. But that's why the first, first couple of rounds, three, four rounds, are always a bit of a crapshoot because teams are still figuring themselves out. Uh, Christian Cares' bro, Jason Tabalo does not hit the same anymore. The guy has fallen off a cliff comparing on what he used to be. Absolutely. Yeah, I would agree. I don't think he's the same player that he once was. Uh, that comes with age. But at the end of the day, I think the Cowboys kind of ruined him a lot of ways. I think they did try to limit him. But by limiting him, he's kind of lost what he used to have. Uh, so, yeah, harsh reality there, but, yeah, I'm not a massive fan of him in that front row. I'm not a massive fan of him in that front row. Uh, I think that's probably where they're maybe liking the most, besides maybe the halfback with Townsend, who is solid enough now. He's coming towards the back end of his career, though. Woke versus Faxes, please put Coates back on the field. Um, what are you talking about? Uh, Richard and Riker says, Cowboys looked way better than the Knights. That's great, but it was one game. Okay, guys, again, round one. One round. One game. That's it. That's it. That's why you don't look too heavily into just one game. You try to piece together what your thoughts could be based off of a, a, a variety of factors until about four rounds in. And then that's when you start to have at least an idea. And there's eight rounds in where you have an idea of what teams are like, right? That's what we always say. That's what everyone should be saying. Cruz Mossen said, I think Cowboys going to win the plus 13. I'm not tipping nice, so they put Cogger at six. I do like Cogger more at six, to be fair, yeah. 
Uh, Cows 30 Knights 8. Uh, Fatima getting around it. Cruz Moffat says a Knight's going to have a rough year, I reckon. Well, I think I tipped them for about 12th, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but then again, they did perform like this in the first half of last year before they, they absolutely came rocketing home late and won like 10 games in a row, right? So, uh, you know, they're, they're an odd team. You know, they're an odd team, the old brickies. Uh, but I will take the Cowboys 1 or 12. I think the Knights will be up for it, but the Cowboys should win at home. And if they don't, question marks will come out for them. They will come out for them. All right, let's go now into the Saturday night game, which is the Melbourne Storm. The Melbourne Storm taking on the New Zealand Warriors in a game that there'll be a lot of eyes on this one. Now, look, guys, let's go and hit that like button. Subscribe if you are new around here. The Melbourne Storm coming to this game in 7th position, whilst the Warriors coming to this game in 10th position. Storm $1.41 to the Warriors, $2.93, and it is at Amy Park in Melbourne. Now, the Storm, obviously, they uh, did away with the Panthers in really solid fashion. You know, the, the Storm, it was controversial. I, I believe the Panthers should have scored a try, and the Storm scored a try right after that one to bring it out to 8-0. It would have been 6-2 if the Panthers had been given their try, which I believe was a try. Uh, but at the end of the day, Storm were defensive masterclass in that second half, man. The Panthers threw everything at them. They threw everything at them, but the Storm just knew how to get it done. And that was round one, where they don't lose round one. I should have been smarter than to tip against them in round one. They just know how to do it. But then again, I feel like it's going to be a tradition for me every single year to tip against them round one, because one day it will happen. One day it will be break broken. If I'm 82 years old... I'm still tipping against him just for the sake of I want to be right the year they do it. Right? <laughs> I want to be right the year that whoever beats him does beat him. Maybe the Titans play next year. You never know. Storm probably playing Vegas next year, to be fair. Uh, so maybe that breaks it. Maybe that breaks it. You never know. But a Storm, they do have a solid enough team. Still no Munster, obviously. Uh, but yet they had no Munster and, and they had no Nelson and were still able to get it done. So a Storm, solid team. Warriors now. Now, that was a concerning output against the Sharks. But again, it was just round one. They were at home, and you saw the talent and the potential and the quality of the Warriors in the first 20 minutes. And then they started to give away silly penalties. You know, it wasn't controversial. And it's good that Warriors fans didn't overall complain about the penalties they were given. Because we do know Warriors fans do like to complain about penalties and complain about, you know, bias and all this type of stuff, right? Which then gets fed to by people who just kind of want to fit in. But overall, the Warriors were good for the first 20 and then fell apart after they got really susceptible with just giving away knock-ons and penalties and all the, the that kind of jazz. That doesn't take away from me that the Warriors are still a good enough team to win this game. And that doesn't take away from me that the Warriors are still a decent enough team this year that will finish in the top eight, in my personal opinion. I did see enough in that game that the Sharkies did way better than them in that final 60 they didn't just take it away from them. You know, they didn't. It was solid and it was quality and it was brilliant by the Sharks, but they didn't completely just take it away from them. So the Warriors still had a bit of resolve about them. The Sharkies had opportunities to just slap them down, but it didn't happen. So although the Warriors lost, I'm not as off them as other people probably are right now. That was at Mount Smart, though, which was disappointing. But as I told you guys in last week's tips, Mount Smart is not a guaranteed win for them. It's it, it hasn't been for a long time. Mount Smart, they, they lost to a baby Broncos last year. <coughs> Jesus, it's like choked on my own breath. Uh, they lost to a baby Broncos team last year at home. And it, it just shows to you why I said, and I emphasized this last week, that the Mount Smart thing, I don't know where this comes from, that it's just an easy guaranteed win for the Warriors over there because it's a home game. It just isn't the case right now. That is... A big crowd for them, but they don't have a fantastic record in recent years. They're not fantastic like a guaranteed win kind of deal. So that's why I did. Well, I was happy to kind of go with the underdog down the Sharkies, which obviously was right. Now for the Storm team here, Marion Seve, Sean Blor, Suela Alvi, Fatlongo, and Tapai Moroa are the ins with no outs. Little Mamma and Bubble, Little Mamma Bubble, Little Mamma Bubble, Run, Bubble, and Alison is the fullback with Will Warbrick and Xavier Coates on the wings. Raymond Smith and Nick Meany are the centres. Go to the 5 8, Jonah Pezzett with the five, uh, halfback being Jerome Hughes. Front row is Big Tui Kami Kamita and Josh King with the front uh, number nine being Harry Grant and captain. Back row is Joe Chan and Elias Katoa with the 13 being Trent Luiero. Uh, interchange, Tyron Wishart, Christian Welch, Chris Lewis and Alec McDonald with the reserves being Sean Blore, Kane Bradley, Marion Seve, uh, Sula Olvi, Fatlongo and Tepai Moroa. The Storm team is the same question marks that we said last week and just 
put it into this week. It was a great round one win, but that does not change my opinion until the parole and otherwise. Like, you know, I need to see it consistently. And this is going to be a theme in this video, guys, because, again, everyone rates round one as like a bolter for how the season's going to go. The Dragons are not going to finish in second, lads. You know, so the point of the matter is that the Storm looks great in a game that they always do look great in. But then we also saw how they kind of went last year. A couple of weeks later, they lost to the Titans, 38-34 up at Seabus. So, you know, I, I, I wait to see because their centers still concern me. The wingers are fine. Um, the fullback is, is great. The halves are solid enough. Uh, obviously, Jonah Pezzett brings that down Hughes up, but Pezzett is still looking nice. Harry Grant's quality. Front row is concerned. Back row is concerned. And lock is a concern with the interchange being a concern. So it still doesn't excite me, this Storm team, and I would not be surprised if the Warriors came out and won this game. I would not be surprised, despite how good the Storm looked defensively in that round one game. But looking at that, the biggest question marks come from their forwards and, and from their positions outside of the spine. And then there is still, with the no coming Munster, there is still the question mark on Pezzet, but I do think that he's solid enough to kind of get the job done whilst Munster is out. Now let's go to the Warriors. Uh, their ins, Ali Liotawa, Shannon harris Savita, Jazz Tavanga, and Tamari Martin, with the outs being Nada. Tang Twal Piki, who had a great game in that uh, that game against the Sharkies, despite the loss. He's the fullback, with Daniel Montaigne Zalesniak and Marcelo Montoya as the wingers. Rocco Berry and Roger Tuovasashek in the centres, with Luke Metcalf, 5'8", Sean Johnson as the halfback. The on the front row is Adam Fenor Blake and Mitchell Barnett, and good to see Wade Egan named as the hooker, because there was concerns in regards to that elbow on the line that was really frustrating to watch and, and hurtful to watch, so Wade Egan is playing hooker. Jackson Ford and Kirk Catewell is the back row, with Tolho Harris as the lock. Interchange, Freddie Delusic, Tom Ali, Bunty R4, and Dylan Walker, with the reserves being Adam Pompey, Jazz Tavanga, Tamari Martin, Ali Liotawa, and Shannon Harris Tavita. Looking at the Warriors team, uh, like their back line enough. I definitely do. I like Tuol Piki. Uh, I know that obviously their main guy is uh, Chancellor Crookstad. And Rocker Berry is actually quite solid in that game against the Sharkies. I love Roger, Dallin, and Marcelo. Marcelo is not unbelievable, but he does his job. Dallin's obviously great, but needs good ball. And then Luke Metcalf and Sean Johnson. So I have no problems really with that one through seven. Uh, I, I do think, though, when you get to the forwards, Adam Fennel Blake is brilliant. Wade Egan, they need him on the field. They fell apart when Wade Egan went off the field in that game against the Sharkies. Barnett's fine. Jackson Ford, solid base. Solid base. Kirk Catewell, I think he's a ton of range, Solid base. And Tol Harris is quality. So, but there, there is probably the most amount of question marks from that forward pack. And then the interchange isn't exactly lighting up the world either. Um, so this Warriors team... Could they bounce back and get this win against the Storm? Absolutely, they could. Absolutely, they could. Do I want to do it? Do I want to tip the, tip them? I haven't tipped many underdogs today, and I feel like I need to. I'm not going to go via that. But do I think the Storm win? Probably my hardest tip of the weekend is, actually, because I could see the Warriors winning it. I could see the Warriors doing it. It is in Melbourne. I'm going to say the Warriors upset them. I'm going to say the Warriors upset them. I'm going to take the Warriors. I'm going to take the Warriors. I'm going to take the Warriors. I reckon it's going to be an upset. Oh, that's a hard one to do, though. I'm going to go against the, the run of play, and I'm going to tip the Warriors to get a surprise win in Melbourne. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll say by 1-12, or like I said, I think they win by a big margin. Uh, but I'm happy to tip the, tip the underdog in this game. I think this one could be uh, up for grabs. I think it could be up for grabs. All right, let's get into the chat. Uh, Richard Riker says, My eyes will be on for sure. Come Warriors, I don't care how you win. Up the Waz. Walnut Hill says, that This one's going to be close. Melbourne defended extremely well last week, and the Warriors looked good last week. It just couldn't get the win. I think Melbourne at home will be too strong and win 1-12. I can see it's got one going either way. Good to see the people are on the same thought process as me. Uh, I think the Warriors looked good for 20 minutes, and they looked enough. They looked like they were fine enough for the other 60 minutes. But still, the Sharkies put them away. To an extent. Uh, Richard Riker says, yeah, they gave away too many dumb penalties. Pissed me off, yeah. Fatima says, Melbourne Storm, just because it's at Melbourne, Warriors don't do well at Melbourne, but they will put up a fight 18-14. Could definitely see that going that way. Uh, Patches, the Warriors have too many injuries at the moment. Uh, I disagree. I disagree. I think that Torpiki covers uh, Charns well enough. I think that, and I think you didn't miss too much there. I think Tane did a great job there. There's no one really else in that back line that has injuries because they are going with everyone there. Unless I'm forgetting about someone. Who's the injuries in their forward pack? 
Who are they missing in their four pack? What what injuries have the Warriors got? Because Wade Ng is playing nine. So what injuries are the the, the four pack? Uh, what what injuries have they got? Because uh, uh, like, please let me know. Like I'm not like having a crack at you. I'm just saying like, what are the injuries that the Warriors do have right now? Because there's no outs from last week. The only one that I can really see is Charles Nickel Klockstad. Am I crazy here? Am I crazy? I think I might be going crazy. I'll get back to that in a sec. Slubber says, Trent Lawyer must be good because he's a fan. he has a fan club, remember? He does, Slubber. He has a massive fan club over here. Uh, Ray 77 says, Baby Broncos wasn't at Mount Smart. Still New Zealand, bro. Uh, Marata. Uh, but Marata and the Ikore? Like, I, I know that that's, you're just giving me the answer, but like, that doesn't change my tip. Marata and the Ikore doesn't change my tip in this game. You know, so... It, uh, Patch, are you saying that because they don't have chance, they don't have Marata near Corey, that they can't win this game? I don't know about that. Emilius is brought off to plus. You don't want to go back and have a look at what I tipped. Uh, Recent says his Warriors four-pack will dominate. They've got a better forward pack. They do. Yeah, Isa says Marata coming off the bench. That's about it. Exactly. Besides Charles and Clockstone, the fullback, who I think is covered quite well by Tane. So, overall, that doesn't change my tier. Uh, Marata near Corey, not there. So... Yeah, look, I, I'm aware the Storm are heavy favourites this one, but the Sharks are heavy favourites against the Warriors and found a win, uh, which kind of goes against what I'm saying, but I just feel like the Warriors could, could get this one. They haven't won a game against the Storm, I feel, for a while, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But I could be wrong, could be wrong, but I just feel like the Warriors might be able to, to bounce back into winning fashion this week, where Warriors fans will then think they'll start to win the comp. Dogs are forces Warriors are big outsiders for some reason. Why would that be? Uh, I think that's based off of round one, and also the fact they're in Melbourne and their recent history against Melbourne. But I also think the Melbourne Storm are a tad overrated based off of that round one performance, which was phenomenal, but also very, very early. Very, very early. Uh, I'm assuming that was in the book, Jay. Uh, Cruz Martin says, Warriors good pack, much better full pack. I'm going to go Storm by eight, sadly. Very hard pick. It's a hard pick. Yeah, it's a hard pick. Probably the hardest pick that I've done so far. I think it's the hardest pick of the, the weekend, actually. I feel like it is. Uh, I feel better when Murata plays. Bunny gives Bunty gives me a heart attack. Yeah, I, I, I feel you. But again, not changing my tip based off of Murata and Yakura being in or out, right? Uh, but there you go. I'm going to go the, uh, the Warriors by 1 to 12 here. The Warriors by 1 to 12. Alrighty. The final two games of the round. We get to beat Bop by 1. Actually, this is probably the hardest game to tip, um, actually. Uh, but we get to the Manly Seagulls taking on the Sydney Chalksters. Seagulls versus Chalksters. Seagulls fifth. The Roosters sixth. The Manly Seagulls are $2.02, two, whilst the Roosters are $1.82. And this is at four, four Pines Park in Sydney. Now, guys, obviously, whack that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you are new around here. Manly, they uh, come to this game after a really good win against the Rabbitohs, where it was a bit of back and forth at the start, and then Manly just took it away late on and won that game by a significant margin. I think it was like 12 in the end, but they should have won 13. Plus, they were better than them over the duration of the game. Uh, and now they're back at home in Manly. So they'll be really excited for this one. Uh, I think that there was some great performances from guys like Luke Brooks. I thought that uh, Trebojevic was also um, fantastic. I think that uh, they did obviously lose Jason Saab. But overall, their, their team was solid enough. And, you know, they, they did take on a Rabbitohs team that are lacking due to injuries. That's a team that can complain about injuries. But Manly were able to just put them away in the end. And, and I was pretty happy with that. Because again, as I say all the time, pre-season predictions, I put them in ninth because I didn't know if they were going to be good. I didn't know if they were going to be bad. So I'm happy to just put them right in the middle. And Manly did look really positive on the things that I wanted to see from them. It's not just the result. I needed to see individual things from individual players collectively combining. And that is what I saw. So that's why I'm more happy with Manly. And I do have them as a top eight team now. The Roosters, on the other hand, they come to this game after a win against the Broncos. Now, both these teams obviously won in Vegas, but the Roosters did away with the Broncos quite well. I, I wasn't ever concerned in that game that the Roosters were falling away from it or they weren't, you know, confidently winning in the game at that point. The Roosters just simply were better. Now, they do obviously have someone who's gone out due to the incident with Ezra Mam and Spencer Lenny. Uh, but overall, that doesn't change my tip on a game based off of that forward when they do have depth in the forwards as well, the Roosters. So, yeah, they, they did impress me. Again, the Roosters are infamous slow starters, though, that we do have to keep in mind. That Although they won in Vegas, that could have been due to the occasion. Uh, and this Roosters team is still susceptible to uh, underachieving on over-expectations. Right? That's how I've, I've put it for this Roosters team going into this year. So... 
Um, yeah, the uh, the Roosters are one that I'm eagerly awaiting to see over this next couple of weeks. Now, for Manly, they're ins. Aaron Woods, Brad Parker, Jamie Humphreys, Raymond Tuomaolo, Avayega, and Tommy Talao in with Jason Saab out. Tom Trebojevic is the fullback with Tommy Talao and Jackson Paulo on the wings. Tom Taquala and Urban Garrick are the centers. Luke Brooks is the 5'8". Daly Cherry Evans is captain and halfback. Front row is Tanya Lopaseca and Josh Aloye, with the nine being Lachlan Croker. Hamoli Olikowatu and Ben Chaboyevich was fantastic in Vegas. In the back row is a great back row pairing. And then Jake Chaboyevich is the lock. Interchange-wise, Carl Lawton, Corey Waddell, uh, Ethan Bollamore, and Nathan Brown, with the reserves being Jake Arthur, Raymond Tuomolo, Vallega, Aaron Woods, Brad Parker, and Jamie Humphreys. Overall, this Manly team is solid. You know, that back line is pacey, and it also has solidity. But Tommy Talao, Korla, and Paulo... Uh, Tommy Talao and Paulo specifically didn't make it their previous clubs, so there is that concerning, concerning factor there defensively at the very minimum. And then Korla and Garrick aren't necessarily known for their defense either, and Garrick is more of a winger than a center. So I do have the concerns that this Roosters backline could piece them apart. I do have concerns about that. But when you've got a spine of Tom Trebojevic, Luke Brooks, Cherry Evans, and Lachlan Croker, there's no problems with that at all. And I did want to wait to see what Brooks would do in this spine. And he did pass with shiny colors and flying colors in that first game. Uh, like I've been saying for years, Brooks just needs to get out of the Tigers and he'll do well. And he's gone manly and he's got the team here to do well. Uh, you go into the forwards though. Back row is great. Lock is great. But the front rowers are the concern uh, in the forwards overall. Paseca and Aloye. Didn't see a fantastic amount out of them in that first game. Uh, Paseca did have a great year last year. Need to see him go on and do it again. And their inner changes are okay. I would say it's probably a pretty weak bench overall. Waddle's fine, underrated. But Lawton, uh, Bullimore, and Brown... I'm not a massive fan of that bench overall. But Manly still are a decent enough team this year. They are a good team if they can compete like they did in that round one game. So I am excited to see them here against a pretty top-notch team. Now for the Sydney Roosters, Angus Crichton, Dom Young, Egan Butcher, Jared Rua Hargraves, and Zach Docker Clay are in with Spencer Lenny obviously being out for the next eight weeks. And it's unfortunate because the last week of his suspension is that Broncos Roosters game, which feels like it was done deliberately. Uh, now the fullback, James Tedesco, he is captain with the wingers being Daniel Tupo and Dom Young. Centers, Joseph Suali'i and Joseph Manu. You got a 5'8", Luke Keery. Seven is Sam Walker with the front rowers being Jared Rhea Hargraves and Lindsay Collins. The nine, Brandon Smith. Back rowers, Suya Wong and Stelly Tupanua with Victor Radley as the uh, lock there. So... Yeah, uh, it looked like Suya Wong was the guy that w was coming off and didn't get as many minutes as Tupanua, but Wong is a good player, man, so I'm looking forward to seeing him in the back row. Uh, Sam Smith, Nafahu White, Nat Butcher, and Terrell May are the interchange with Connor Watson, Fetalanga, Paulga, Egan Butcher, Zach Docker Clay, and Angus Crichton as the reserves. Th there really isn't a great deal to pick apart from this team. Uh, there is still going to be some slight, you know, kind of side looks at Sam Walker and Luke Keary for the time being. Uh, even at Brandon Smith as well. Back row is something that has potential, but also there is better back row combinations in the competition. Victor Radley was brilliant in that first game and loved their f uh, front rowers, and especially with Terrell May coming off the bench. Uh, he's nearly a must in Supercoach at this point, uh, especially with the suspension of Spencer Lenu. Uh, and their back line, their one through five, is probably the best back line of the competition. Uh, I, I don't think that you could really debate that. Tedesco was brilliant in, in uh, game one. He was the best fullback in Vegas. Tupo, Dom Young, Manu, and Swilly is probably the best two through five in the competition as well. So, yeah, I, I, I am going to take Roosters in this game. I am, despite their slow, their infamous slow starting. But I do think that overall, I do actually kind of like the 11 through 13 for Manly better than the 11 through 13 for the Roosters. I think that Lachlan Croker and Brand Smith actually currently, besides the name of Brand Smith, I think currently they're actually on a very similar level. But the, the front row forwards for the Roosters take it over the Manly front row forwards for mine, and the depth on the interchange isn't great. So that's why I'm going to still take the Roosters here. And because of that defensive liability from 2 through 5, I do think that the Roosters will be able to, to score some points in this game. So I will take the Roosters in it. I will take them 1 to 12. I could see a world 13 plus if Manly don't prove themselves like they have. Have, uh, but I will take the Roosters by uh, 1 or 12 in, in a close game. Uh, Swift says, I got Storm 1 or 10 in close matchup, not going to lie. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 1 or 10 is interesting. We don't want to go 1 or 12. Now, Richard and Riker says, Sean and Metcalf need to link up more, I think. Bug says, um, I hope you're right, bro. Oh, about the Warriors game. Uh, Warner Hill says, this in Melbourne versus Warriors with the games of the week. I've got mainly 1 or 12. I think Storm Warriors with the game of the week, but this one definitely does has, have the opportunity as well. 
it definitely does have the opportunity as well. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm really looking forward to this game just to see if Manly are the team that we think that they could be this year. Uh, Swift says Manly beat Roosters. Cruz Martin says Roosters 1 to 5 is the best in the comp, but outside that, not too sure. Don't like Smith at 9, agree. And then 6 and 7 got a bit to prove, agree. We're good round 1, but I think I like Cherry and Brooks more. Uh, oh, Cherry and Brooks are a better halves pairing than Luke here and Sam Walker, for sure. There's no doubt about that. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're, Sam Walker has to has to prove that he is the origin caliber that has been talked about him for a long time. And Luke Keery just needs to keep proving that the age factor doesn't impact him, right? A Dr. Forster, as a Manly fan, I'm scared of our backline defense because Saab has improved on defense so much in the past year. But other than that, I'm feeling confident we get over him. Uh, Saab's defense is still very, very liability. Uh, but I just think that that Roosh's backline should be able to score points. I think they should be able to score points. If you can go toe-to-toe with them like you did against the Rabbitohs and, and score, you know, 20, 24, 30-plus points, then, yeah, you have a chance to win this game. But I do think I could see the Roosters, again, that the forwards aren't exactly fantastic defensively either, but I do think that the Roosters should score minimum 20 points here. I think they should score minimum 20 points here. So Manly do need to go toe-to-toe with them attacking-wise, uh, where I think that their defense is probably a bit better. But again, I'm really excited to see if Manly can prove to beat the team that we know have they have the potential to be. But I just think that that back line is concerning outside of the, the 1, 6, and 7. Uh, Richmond Rugger says, if DC is on, on his game, they could win. We could say that about every single team, though, to be fair. Roosters, 16-10. Sub is a pretty big loss, but can go away. That's a very defensive game for these two teams. Very, very defensive game for these two teams. Uh, Sub says, winner will be a bird. Thank you, Slapper, for that really, really Dazmady kind of response there. Uh, I think you're right. I think you might be right for sure. I think you might be right. Uh, but you can cook one. You can't cook the other one, unless you're from a weird country that eats eagles, um, which is not Australia. So we're going to move on from that one. But you can cook a rooster. Yeah, I might even go to Red Rooster after this. How about that? How about that? But there we go, guys. That's my tip. I'm taking the roosters 1 to 12. Could see a 13 plus huh, to be honest. But all right. The final game here of the round. It is versus the St. George and Dragons, Dolphins and the Dragons. Dolphins are 17th, whilst the Dragons are 2nd. The Dolphins are $2.02 2 underdogs, while the Dragons are $1.82. And it is at KO Stadium in Redcliffe. Now, guys, obviously, go and hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new around here. We'll be live streaming every single game this weekend. It's going to be a massive weekend uh, of slapping it down. But, yeah, the Dolphins come in this game after a real poor performance against the Cowboys. A really, really poor performance where... It left a lot of question marks and confusion about kind of who they are as a team. Is Are they going into a direction where Christian Wolfe is taking over? Wayne Bennett's on his way out. They play players in positions that kind of said something, and then this week they're saying the opposite. I, I just don't know. The Dolphins just seem like they're trying to figure who they are out at the moment. And I think that people are starting to recognize that this... Like, I, I got comments on that stream on the weekend saying the Dolphins have a much better line than the Cowboys, which I find absolutely ludicrous and absurd. I don't think the Dolphins are even close to, you know, the names on paper to a lot of teams. Uh, pretty much every team, right? They've definitely beat the Tigers on team on paper, and they're probably... I don't know if they even beat the Dogs on team on paper. Uh, it'd be close, but, you know, I think that people want to see the Dolphins successful because they're a fresh fad, but the fad will fade, guys. The fad will fade. Right, you will understand this. The longer the years go on, it is a fad, and especially if they start to lose that success and they start to kind of fall away, you will see people go back to the Broncos. You will see people go back to opposition teams. So the Dolphins need to really kick up right now to keep that momentum from last year, because otherwise it will all go to the wayside. And they need to prove themselves in this game against a Dragons team that is now potentially the most overrated team in the comp based on the win against the Titans, who were absolutely dreadful in that game. The Titans were dreadful. The Dragons were made to look like world beaters by whatever the Titans did in that game. You know, as, a, as you guys know, I am a Titans fan. But you look at everything the Titans did in that game, and honestly, even the Tigers probably would have beat the Titans in that game. Actually, maybe not, because that first half, the Titans still have a lot of attack. They probably, even without Foran, without Fafita, and without Jaden Campbell, they probably still would have beat the Tigers because they would have had enough points on the board. Dragons defensively were fine enough and were solid enough, but there was nothing that the Titans were really throwing at them and attack it was just real basic stuff, right? Because there was no fods and there was no extra added additions of JC and also uh, Dave Fafita to kind of include on that. So the Dragons were fine and the Dragons were solid enough, but that doesn't now mean that I think that they're a, a top eight team by either. I still have them in the bottom four and this game will prove a lot in going that, that way because if they struggle to beat the Dolphins, it will tell me a lot about it, it was round one. Um... 
but again, it's like it's the Dolphins. So even if they win, I want to see them against a team that people are actually considering for a big time spot, right? Now, this is the case in Redcliffe. The Dolphins team lineup, Ewan Aiken, Isai Katoa, Jake Avarillo, Kurt Donahue, uh, Mason Teague, and Oren Keeley are in, with the outs being Canelli Lemielu and Ray Stone. Fullback, Hamisa Tabuifado, with the wingers being Jermaine Sarko and Jack Bostock, with Jake Avarillo coming in. Wow, Dolphins, thank you. And Herbie Farmworth into the centres. 5'8", Cody Nikorima, and Isaiah Katoa as the halfback. And you go to the front row, Jesse Bromwich and Thomas Flegler, with the number nine being Jeremy Marshall King. You go to the back row, Felice Kafusi and Ewan Aiken, with Max Plath as the lock. Josh Kerr, Kenneth Bromwich, Mark Nichols, and Jared Wallace. Wow, Dolphins. And then you go to the reserves, Kurt Donahue, Sean O'Sullivan, Oren Keeley, Tess, and Ewan Mason Teague. Now, before I... Before I get people who don't understand why I looked at the camera like I did when I said it's so I could tell her, and then ja Jared Wallace, and then with Jake Avarillo, it's because they should have been playing in round one. And there's no question about that. But the biggest question mark that I have here is that in round one, so actually, now let's go back to last year. Let's take a step back. In 2023, the Dolphins decide to play Asaya Katoa for the entirety of the season, as their 5'8", and Sean O'Sullivan as the halfback, right? Now, if I'm saying out of line here, because O'Sullivan, is O'Sullivan injured, or is he just not being played? Is he, he's not on the reserve. Oh, no, he's on the reserve. So, okay, my point definitely does remain. So, 2023, they play a psycho toe as the six the whole season, alongside um, Sean O'Sullivan at seven, right? So, they showed that they wanted him, and then it didn't pan out. But he was also still solid enough to keep that team above kind of last place, where a lot of people predicted them. Then round one comes along, and they select Cody Nicarima and Sean O'Sullivan. Kind of saying, well, we believed in you, Sean O'Sullivan, but now we don't. And then in round two, they're now bringing O'Sullivan in, not on 5-8, but in seven. So now are they saying that Sean O'Sullivan is not believed in? Is Cody Nicarima the main guy in their halves? Which, for me, is the most absurd thing that I've ever heard in my life. But the, the way that they're playing this halves right now is, what? why? What, like, what is happening here? How do you not know going into round two who your halves are? How do you, how have you gotten to this stage? You also got three preseason games. They got three preseason games. One against the Capras, one against the Titans, which they struggled in, and then the other one was against I can't remember. I can't remember who they played the other one, but they weren't great at the preseason. But how do they not know going into the season who their halves that they want to go with is? It baffles me. It absolutely baffles me. So that is concerning. The center, I'm great, happy. Their 1 through 5 is great. I, I like it. Defensively, a little bit inept, but 1 through 5 is still very solid in the attack in front. But again, it comes down to the halves, how that 1 through 5 does go. Uh, their forwards are fine. Um, it's nothing that jumps out of the world at you. You and Aiken's obviously getting a little bit on in year. Well, it just hasn't really been able to continue on from the quality he's had in the past. Kafusi. Is kick, let's see if he kicks on. Flag life never really rated. He scored a try, but it was really soft defense there by the Cowboys overall on that, that try. Uh, I just feel like this forward pack is disappointing for me. Although the, in their time, they have had Jesse Brummage, who was great at the Storm. Flagler was solid enough and fine quality enough at the Broncos. Kafusi has had his moments here for the Dolphins as well. Ewan Aiken has been good in the Warriors and uh, Dragons and whatnot in the past. Max Plus is, uh, is the young guy coming through. I, I just don't rate that full back. I don't rate it as I would have five years ago. Yeah, so not a fan of... I think the Dolphins could finish lower than a lot of people think. But I do think this this bench here is uh, is solid. It's uh, And I do like the addition of Jared Wallace, who was probably their best player in the preseason. Right? But overall, I'm really, really concerned long-term about the Dolphins. I'm concerned significantly about the Dolphins. Now, we move to the Dragons team lineup. Blake Laurie, Christian Tuipalotu, Hamai Sele, and Luciano Leilu with the outs being Anada. Fullback, Tyrell Sloan with wingers being Taxman, Zach Lomax, and Michele Ravalawa. With the centers being Moses Sully and Jack Bird. 5'8", Kyle Flanagan with Ben Hunt, captain as the halfback. Francis Molo and Blake Laurie front row. Jacob, Siddle, uh, Jacob Little sorry, is the number nine. Tom Eisenhuth and Jaden Stewart back row with Jack DeBellin as the lock. You go to the interchange, Connor Moylison, Michael Molo, Raymond Fatana Mariner, and Luciano Leilua, with the reserves being Viliami Fafida, Christian Tupolotu, Jesse Marschke, Ben Murdoch Masilla, and Hame Sele. Uh, so interesting why he's not getting into the team. They must obviously just be slowly making his way back in. Could still play, though. 
you never know. But, you know, I, I, I've got him above Francis Molo. But, you know, you look at this team, and it doesn't jump out at you on paper. They had a good win in round one against the Titans, for sure, like I said. Uh, but at the end of the day, it was against the Titans team that literally probably would have lost to 15, 16, 15 teams on that day. Maybe even 16. Uh, just I'm always just removing the Tigers from that equation because one, the Titans always beat the Titan, Tigers and also two, the Tigers, the Tigers. Um, Sloan is not going to score a hat-trick every week. Uh, it's, he's way too inconsistent for that one. Uh, Lomax is proving himself right now because he wants a new contract, whether that be the Dragons or the Panama Squeals, which he gave me a thumbs up for, by the way, on the field. Uh, Suli and Bird is, is, you know, they're solid for sure, and Ravalawa is solid, but also can have a mere game in him. A fun thing, it's not going to play like that every week, that's for sure. Ben Hunt, obviously, is a great halfback. You'll love to see him. Uh, front row is there. Blake Laurie is a massive addition in the front row. Little has been actually quite good. I like Little. Um, he has been quite good. Eisenhuth and Sewer. Eisenhuth's been getting some good offloads away and whatnot, but again, I need to see it happen again. I, I liked him in the preseason, though, too, Eisenhuth, which is why I say that. Uh, and DeBellin back in is a huge one defensively in that lock. A bench. I liked Raymond for Mariner, to be completely honest with you. I really did. So uh, I would love to see him still be in this team, but DeBellin is solid enough there. And they get Luciano Lelua into the team. So look, this game has, uh, I don't know who wins all over it. This game has, I don't know, I don't have a clue who wins all over it. And that's why the odds are basically even. $2 to a delay two. Uh, Dragons won big. Dolphins lost big. And yet the Dolphins are still close enough for the Dragons there, which tells you everything you need to know. Uh, this is at KO Stadium in Redcliffe. Um, I just don't know. I just don't know how to read this game. I just don't know. I'm going to take the Dolphins at home. I'm not convinced on the consistency with the Dragons until I see it over and over again. I'll take them in a close one, 1-12, one but I'm not convinced on the Dragons until they prove it over and over again then. I need to know that that wasn't just uh, because it was against the Titans team that looked god-awful all the day. I need to know... I, I, yeah, I just... This Dolphins team concerns me a great deal, but so does this Dragons team on a consistency level. I know that everyone's going to hit the Dragons based off of their round one performance, but I'm going to take the Dolphins 1-12. I'm going to take the Dolphins 1-12. Uh, Chris Monster, I think Dolphins tanking. Why has Katoa moved to seven? I just don't get it. I don't I don't get it, but I guess they're just trying to figure out what their halves are. Round three, you'll probably end up saying, so I don't know, they might have to buy, but um, next round, they'll probably have it. Sai Katoa six and Sean O'Sullivan seven, or Sean O'Sullivan seven with uh, Sai Katoa six. You never know. Um, Warner Hill says, Dolphins were not good last week. Dragons exceeded expectations and look good in attack, although it is just round one. I'm going to back the Dragons one twelve. Alexander Cresti is the Dragons 13 plus, Ravala and Sloan in time try scorers. Uh, Cruise Mon says, I'm concerned about the Dolphins. I don't know what's going on. It's like their Roosters is really bad. I think they can p- compete for the spoon. Um, I think their back line will be good in this game. I think their back line... Yeah, people can call me crazy now. I'm happy for people to call me crazy now. You can't be a content creator. You can't be in this industry if you're not willing to get things wrong. Um, because you're going to you're gonna get people who are fans of all teams who you don't tip for, and they'll be like, you're crazy. This is never going to happen. That's just how the cookie crumbles, right? But... Um, yeah, I just feel like I've got a bit of an inkling that they'll get the the Dolphins will get the win this game. Uh, Woke vs. Facts says you keep saying one game, so you don't pre- take Priest into account then. No, not really. Players don't really care about the results there for fair and valid reasons. Um, you're playing completely different squads all throughout the game. You're changing players five, ten minutes in. You've got extended benches, extended reserves. Uh, you're trialing things out. So, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, I'm saying it's only been one game. Absolutely. There's no debate about that. There has only been one game. You know, like I don't understand what the, the kind of comment is about there. Yes, 100%. There has only been one game in the regular season. And, there's only been one, and that's the only game that I really do take into account. Uh, Alexander Cressy says the bottom four team doesn't play the way they did against the Titans. Uh, I disagree. I disagree. I disagree. I think that you're taking well... I think you're probably a Dragons fan, but I think that you're taking it one game into way too much account. Uh, no, Dragons are not top eight team. It was a good win for them, but I don't look too much into it. Absolutely, Chris Molson. If they win this game 13+, plus, I'll start to believe in them a little bit more. I will start to believe in them a little bit more, but I feel like there's a few Dragons fans in the chat who are unwilling to understand kind of you know, the thought process that I'm putting out there. Um, Alexander says, people say it's only round one, but if the Dragons got smashed against the Titans, people will be bagging us. There you go. See? Us. Bang. There's the Dragons fan. Told you. Um, yes. Just like they're bagging the Titans. So, like, what's your point? Like, what's your point? What, what is the point that you're making in that situation? I don't get it. 
that makes no that has no, no relevance to what I'm saying here. If this happened, then that would have happened. Yeah, just like the Titans are getting slammed by now. Because guess what? The Titans got slammed by a team that most predict for bottom four. You know, it's just like the Dragons. They got slammed, then, you know, people would have said probably... The focus would have been more on the Titans than the Dragons, to be fair. Um, because the Titans have more a lot, a lot higher expectations and hype this year than the Dragons. So that's what the focus would be more on. Maybe Desi is the right answer here. But because they got smashed by the Dragons, who are predicted to be bottom four, that's why the Titans cop most of the hate in that situation. Uh, Swift said Dragons are smashed Dolphins. Okay. Y- Young Mavis says, what happened to Milford? Uh, I think he's injured, but I also just don't think he's the guy that they want to go with anyway. Uh, Kruzman says, I'm tipping Dragons. This Dolphins team stupid. Dragons 24-16. Can see it. Can see it. Uh, Richard and Riker says, Dragons will breathe fire on the Dolphins town plus. Andrew Backhouse says, Bostock should be dropped for new. Disagree. Disagree. Uh, there's no way Dolphins are winning, bro. You're a Dragons fan, aren't you? Uh, Jay says, that's what everyone said last year. Yep. Andy Baggins says, he's been the Titans this week against the bye. Um, you're an Eels fan, mate. You've got nearly more spoons than the Eels will be in the comp. Uh, Swift says, I'm a dra- I'm calling it, aren't I? The, the ones that are uh, put, making the most pushback on the comments that I'm making are Dragon fans. Okay, there you go. <laughs> like, you know, this is the thing, guys. Try to take your own team's perspective out. That's why I tell you when the Titans are playing, I will tip them, but I will tell you to understand I'm a Titans fan because at the end of the day, I'm going to see the positive rather than the negatives. So like the only pushback that I'm really seriously getting here is from Dragons fans overall. Uh, Fatima says, that was there. no way. It's like saying Warriors won't make top eight because they lost him up. But yeah, it's, it's, it's one round, but everyone always likes to go off of one round. That's why I say wait till five to eight rounds in, then we know what teams are like. Jesse Hampton says, it's round one. The Titans are playing a new type of game on the Dez. They haven't adjusted. Give them a month. The Dragons won one game. Luckily, skill on the tumble. So, same can be said about a shame finally at the Dragons. But, like, overall, yes. Like, overall, yes. So, um, controversially, I will go to Dolphins with this one in a 1-12-er. Um, definitely could be proven wrong, for sure. Um, definitely could be uh, definitely could be proven wrong. Uh, but at the end of the day, I just think that, that that one through seven there for the Dolphins up against the Dragon one through seven is, is quite even. If not, maybe on paper, I'd probably lean with the, the Dolphins there, one through seven. Maybe if you specifically want to go one through five, because Ben Hunt does really lift that up. Uh, and the forwards, I, I can definitely see both sides of the argument in regards to the forwards. And then in regards to the bench, I actually do like the bench. I, I, so I do like the bench of the Dragons, uh, not the Dragons, the Dolphins more there, but I do love the inclusion of Leilua, and I do think that Raymond Fatala Marin uh, did have a great game, but Modelson and Moller don't get it going for me. Whilst I like Jared Wallace there, Nichols is fine, Kenneth Brumwich is fine, and Josh Kurt had a great game against the Cowboys despite the loss. So uh, that's why I'll go against the. Um, yeah, exactly right. It's been one round, Chris Modelson, but the Dragons fans, they just they, they, they can't fathom a world where you know they go back to a reality that is probably a lot more realistic overall. So, um, yeah, Dinky Link says, as big as a Dragons fan I am, this is a game that we can prove we can be consistent, but it won't, we won't be fully proven until we beat an actually good, consistent team. Absolutely. Yeah, you would need to... This game won't prove really a great deal if you win. Um, it, it, it would go... Again, your favourites, but there's a reason why you're not as heavy favourites despite getting a big win. It's the thing that I feel like Dragons fans aren't really taking into account. The Dragons had a big win against the Titans. And yet the Dolphins had a massive loss against the Cowboys. And yet it's only a 20 cent difference. Like it's only literally a 20 cent difference. That means the bookies are like, we don't know who's going to win this game. That means that everyone overall doesn't know and they're not convinced on either of these teams yet. But yet they're still kind of leaning towards the preseason belief of the Dolphins rather than the Dragons. So, you know, most Dragons fans just need to kind of get that into their head that you haven't convinced anybody yet. The the convincing needs to be done overall, but you haven't convinced anybody yet. You know, because again, it's been one round. Five to eight rounds in, if you've won like six games or five games, people will take you a bit more seriously. But we're not going to take you too seriously based off of two points. Like, it's, it's literally two points. Again, the Dragons whooped the Titans last year in round two, which was their round one. And the Titans still finished above the Dragons last year, right? Because the Titans ended up beating the Dragons a couple of weeks later. Right, so that's why you've got to really understand. This same conversation from Dragons fans was said last year when they were top of the table after two rounds because they had to buy and then beat the Titans. But then it went downhill, downhill, downhill. Now, it's a different time, and I understand the excitement, but you do have to be a lot more realistic about how other people, other people view your team right now. So that's what, I have, that's what I have to say there. That's not me saying that you are a wooden spooner because I never tipped you for the wooden spoon. But I do still think that overall, in 2024, the Dragons will struggle more often than not. Prove me wrong. Continue to prove me wrong. One game. 
But that's going to be it here for today, guys. Uh, we've gone through all the games. So I'll just quickly go through a wrap-up. I did take the Broncos by 1-12. I took the Sharks by 13+. I took the Panthers 1-12. I took the Raiders 13+. Uh, I took the Cowboys at 1-12. I took the Warriors in an upset uh, by 1-12. Uh, I went with the Roosters by 1-12 with an idea they could win that plus. And then I've gone with the Dolphins in an upset 1-12. But it's not really an upset because, again, look at the two odds. Look at the two odds there. And I'm taking the Titans against the bye, funnily enough. Yeah, yeah, I'm taking the Titans against the bye. Uh, but I hope you have enjoyed. We'll read a couple more comments out here. Uh, Richard Riker says, Bro, I'm never confident, confident in my team. Uh, I'm nervous every game I watch, but always hopeful at the wires. You gotta, that's the way you've got to be, man. Uh, like, that's the way you just got to be. Uh, Warner Hill says, Honestly, this definitely could go either way, but I'm just going Dragons. But I think if the Dolphins get together, they could win at 1-12 or even 13+. plus. But yeah, the Dragons are just uh, calling me. I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of one of those games where you just have to go with your gut. It is. Titans 13 plus versus the buy. Thank you, Walnut Hills. Appreciate that, bro. Need to hear that <laughs> right about now. Need to hear that, to be fair. Cruz Mossman says, I think if Dragons beat someone like the Sharks at Shark Park, then you can talk. Yeah, actually, let's quickly have a look at their next couple of games. Dragons, bang. Dolphins, Cowboys. If they can get... Like, it's not like this opening schedule is too tough. You know, Dolphins, Cowboys, Manly. Knights, Tigers. If they can get a win out of either of these two games, I might start to have a bit of a more of an inkling on them. I think this game will be the one that we really do look at the most, though. I think Dragons Cowboys will be the one that we really look at most. But there is an argument that the Dolphins are beatable, Cowboys are beatable, the Manly Seagulls are beatable, Knights are beatable, and Tigers are beatable. I, I think if they beat the Warriors, it'd be impressive, and the Roosters are impressive. Well, wow, that's a tough stretch, geez. Warriors, Roosters, Sharks, Rabbitohs. Wow, that's a tough four weeks there for the Dragons. That'll tell me a lot where your team is at. That starts that seven-round period, though. So maybe I might even be waiting until like around 11, around 10 to, to kind of get a good grasp on where the Dragons are at because that four-game stretch of Rabbitohs, Sharks, Roosters, and Warriors uh, is, is a big four-game stretch after a seven-round schedule, a six-round schedule that you could argue that the Dragons could get something out of it. But these, these three games here... Based off of these three games here, could be could be ones to, to really focus on as well. But you know, you're not really looking too much at the Dolphins one. You just you're just not. But um, yeah, you know, I, I know you guys can understand kind of where I'm coming from for the most part. Uh, by the way, bro, I always cheer on the Titans except when it's against the Warriors. Now I appreciate you, Richard and Riker. You know, we keep doing our thing, bro. We keep doing our thing. We'll be at the Bulldogs next week, and I'll be there and see how we go. We'll see how we go, but. Much love, guys. I'm going to jump off here for today. Uh, there'll be a video that comes out tomorrow, and then we're back on streaming on Thursday night for the Broncos and Rabbitohs game. Obviously, go and hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new around here. I appreciate you guys as per usual. Um, good luck this weekend for all teams, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. See ya.